Today we're going to talk briefly about my ether model, which I loosely refer to as the ohm particle model. Okay, and uh, so even though I refer to it as my ether model, it's not really my ether model. I'm not taking ownership of it. I'm not saying that this is my model and only my model. This is a model that I've developed over years and years of, of studying other people's models and putting the pieces together to come up with, with my own model. And so um, I am standing on the shoulders of many, 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 many other people who have had uh, maybe similar ether models, uh, maybe not exactly the same as what I'm saying, but um, when I say my ether model, what I'm referring to is the model of the ether that I'm proposing and supporting. So the main question we want to be asking is, um, can there be an ether? I don't think the question should be, is there an ether or isn't there an ether? I think the question should really be, can there be an ether? Okay, could it be possible that there is an ether model out there that allows the ether to exist? And if it does exist, um, what is it made of? Okay, so can they, there be an ether? And what is it made of? Where does it come from? These are the questions that uh, we need to be asking. So by asking the question, where did it come from? Uh, then we're talking about the beginning. Okay, so where did the ether come from? Uh, in my opinion, in the beginning uh, was everything. So uh, the universe didn't emerge out of nothing. It is my opinion that the uh, universe uh, and the ether and all of matter uh, emerged from everything. So uh, in when I use my in the beginning teaching tool, I would say in the beginning was everything. So now we're invoking the principle of incommensurability. So when I use my in the beginning teaching tool, I'm invoking the principle of incommensurability. So I would say in the beginning was everything and creator said, let there be something. Okay, something and everything are incommensurate principles. So I would say in the beginning was everything and creator said, let, them, let there be, be something or more accurately, uh, let there be some things. So in the beginning was everything and creator said, let there be some things. Or you could say in the beginning was one thing and creator said, let there be many things. Okay, so um, the universe began as one thing and then out of that emerged many things. So how can many things emerge from one thing? Well, one thing I can tell you is that um, for many things to uh, emerge from one thing, there must have been some sort of a phase transition. Okay, so many things emerged from one thing via a phase transition. So the universe began as one thing, which we'll talk about what that is in a minute. There was a phase transition and then many things emerged from that. So in my ether model, I refer to the one thing as the original medium. So the universe began as original medium. There was a phase transition and then um, out of that emerged another medium, uh, which I'm referring, referring to as emergent medium or EM. And this alternatively can be thought of as the electromagnetic medium, aka the medium for the propagation of light. So if there is an ether, it's my opinion, if there is a medium for the propagation of light, which we all refer to as the ether, it, there, it must have emerged from a phase transi fr transition from some original um, medium or state of the uh, universe. So is there something uh, that we know of in nature that experiences this kinds of phase transition that goes from some um, very simple state of one thing to a more complex state of uh, many things? And there is in such a thing called a 
Bose-Einstein condensate. So otherwise known as a BEC. So since it's kind of hard to say Bose-Einstein condensate, I'm going to call it a BEC. So a BEC is a state of matter in which separate atoms or subatomic particles cooled to near absolute zero coalesce into a single quantum mechanical entity that is one that can be described by a wave func function. Okay, so this is the, it coalesces into a single quantum mechanical entity, aka one thing. Okay, so when you cool a material down to almost absolute zero, it becomes um, one thing, or it is described by a single wave function. So how do you go from one thing to many things? Well, it turns out if uh, when you try to spin a BEC, so when you cool a material down to almost absolute zero, and then you try to spin it, it does not want to spin, okay? It is, it is pure inertia. It is completely resisting um, any effort to try to spin the BEC. And what happens is at a certain point, there is a phase transition where um, tiny um, parts of the BEC begin to circulate. And so you will see these little uh, black dots. So this uh, circle here, this is an actual BEC experiment. And so you can see here is uh, before the phase transition. And then at the phase transition, these uh, little uh, dots be up here and there is circulation going on in these dots. And these are referred to as vortex anti-vortex pairs. And you can see that they're not just appearing uh, randomly necessarily, but they are forming a sort of, you can see little triangles forming and together they seem to form hexagonal shapes. Um, they, um, you know, basically form a, a periodic grid. You can see the periodic grid forming. And so this is what happens to a BEC when uh, you s try to spin it up and you get to a certain point where um, the angular momentum gets converted to uh, small vortexes, vortex, uh, anti-vortex pairs that form in the BEC. So in the beginning was one thing and creator said, let there be many things. And so this is how many things can em emerge from one thing. And in the model I'm proposing, uh, this is the, these little dots here, these vortex, anti-vortex pairs um, are analogous to the medium for the propagation of, of light. And so, or the um, emergent medium, I guess you could call it. And so this is the original medium, which is one thing. And this is the little block, black dots in here. This is the emergent medium. Okay, this is the emergent medium. And this corresponds to many things. So in the beginning was one thing. And then there was a phase transition and which um, brought about the emergence of many things. So basically what I'm saying is the universe began at the opposite end of the thermodynamic spectrum as the um, Big Bang. Okay, it began at um, the uh, super cold. So the universe began as a cold, dense, superfluid, or Bose-Einstein condensate, uh, rather than a hot, dense soup. So interestingly, the BEC actually has two phase transitions. Okay, so uh, the first phase transition happens at around 2.1 Kelvin. And now I just want to explain this um, spinning up a BEC and warming up a BEC has the same effect, okay? It has the uh, same two phase transitions that I'm going to talk about. And so when you spin up and or warm up uh, a BEC, so when you warm up a BEC at around 2.1 Kelvin, you get the first phase transition. 
which brings about the vortex anti vortex pairs, which I refer to as a medium. Okay, and then at around 2.7 Kelvin, there's another phase transition that brings about the formation of unpaired vortices. So the first phase transition uh, brings about the vortex anti vortex pairs, and the second phase transition phase transition brings about the uh, unpaired vortices. And the unpaired vortices, in my analogy, are analogous to, um, to positive and negative charges. And unpaired positive and negative charges are associated with matter, aka electrons and protons and uh, everything above that. And so um, in my analogy to the BEC, in my ether model, the universe begins at the opposite end of the thermodynamic spectrum at around at absolute zero. And as it spins up or warms up, you get the first phase transition that brings about the vortex anti vortex pair medium, which is the medium for the propagation of light. And the second phase transition brings about um, the unpaired vortices, which uh, are basically um, associated with matter. So put simply, in the beginning was a BEC, and creator said, let there be light, aka the medium for the propagation of light, and creator said, let there be matter. And of course, without matter, there would literally be no such thing as light, because um, without matter, uh, there would be nothing perturbing the medium to create um, a wave which we perceive as light. So the BEC does kind of set precedence for there being um, such thing as a medium. And I find uh, this piece of information very interesting in the standard uh, BEC experiments and superfluid experiments, um, this temperature of this phase transition uh, that goes from the uh, vortex anti vortex pairs to the unpaired vortices, which I identify as matter, happens to be around 2.7 Kelvin, which is also the temperature of the cosmic microwave um, background radiation. And so it's my opinion that. Um, the universe, the whole of the universe, had to be 2.7 degrees Kelvin before any um, particles of matter could appear in the medium. And so, and that is why we have a cosmic microwave background radiation. Yes, the 2.7 K is associated with the beginning of the universe. And, uh, but I believe it is associated with the second phase transition. And of course, phase transitions can look like bangs. And so I'm not completely denying that there was a big bang, but um, in my opinion, the big bang um, is more likely to be a big phase transition. So this big phase transition that happened at around 2.7 uh, degrees Kelvin is um, the big bang in disguise. Okay, like I said before, phase transitions can look like bangs. They ha can happen suddenly and without warning. Um, but this model here, in this model here, we ha get some clues as to what might have happened before the big bang. And speaking of before the Big Bang, you might be interested in reading this book by Ernest Sternglass called Before the Big Bang. This is actually where I originally got the idea for the um, vortex anti vortex pairs, the electron positron pairs um, that I believe make up the um, medium for the propagation of light. Um, so he wrote about that in this book, and I highly recommend this book. I actually spoke to Ernest Sternglass uh, many years ago before he passed away, and uh, he actually met Albert Einstein. So when he was an undergrad student, he uh, met Albert Einstein and actually talked to Albert Einstein about his uh, ideas about what might have happened before the Big Bang. So I highly recommend this book. Uh, you can probably get it on Amazon. 
And uh, there's a really nice section in the book where he talks about how he met Albert Einstein and how uh, Albert Einstein tried to dissuade him from um, going to uh, graduate school. He had just graduated as an undergrad and he was going to go to graduate school. And actually Albert Einstein tried to dissuade him from going to graduate school because he said it would crush his uh, originality. And so... <laughs> You know, this uh, book actually gave me some uh, insights into the thinking of Albert Einstein, which goes contrary to uh, the standard thinking about this man. And so it made me appreciate Einstein more after reading um, about that in this book and about hearing Ernest Sternglass tell me about it when we had our conversation. And so uh, I recommend this book, Before the Big Bang by Ernest J. Sternglass. There is another model that I looked at extensively that models the vacuum, the medium as electron-positron pairs. A lot of my ideas I got from the E. Pola model, which um, was developed by Professor Simhoney from the Hebrew University. He has since passed away, but it is uh, being championed by Guy um, Grantham. And if you go to uh, www.epola.co.uk, you can find that research. Another person I studied extensively was uh, Don Hodson. Now Don Hodson has also passed away. I believe he passed away in 2014. But uh, I highly recommend you uh, reading his papers if you can find them. I will try to leave links to his work. But he's the one. He, he also talks about electron-positron pairs. Um, but he also <clears throat> is the one that got me thinking about um, looking at the Bose-Einstein condensate as a potential looking at the uh, opposite end of the thermodynamic spectrum, which is, I think, how he worded it, um, to uh, find the beginning of the universe. And so this is uh, was a really interesting line of thinking, and I highly recommend that you at least uh, take a look at his work. So in my quest to answer the question, can there be an ether? Obviously, I had to do uh, quite a bit of research, and I stood on the shoulders of, of many great people. And so I'm going to leave it at that. This, of course, is just a very simplistic um, overview of how I came to my conclusions as to what the ether might be if there was an ether. And, of course, there are a lot more details I need to get into, but I just wanted to get this out there just to give you sort of a high-level overview of the direction that I took and the direction that I am going. So I'm going to leave it at that. And I hope you guys are having a great weekend. And um, I would like to do another live stream uh, soon, hopefully. I don't know when yet, but I have to kind of plan that out. But otherwise, um, have a good day.